Which Nintendo game best took advantage of its hardware? Was it Wii Sports with its complete reliance on Wiimote technology? Or how about Ocarina of Time with its innovative Z targeting? Or maybe, just maybe, the answer lies in a certain RPG involving our favorite plumber. No, not that one. Not that one either. Just roll the episode. It's simply incredible how many different experiences fall under the label of video game. Some titles are simple and rely on our natural intuition and rhythm to understand the basic concepts of the world. Other titles rely on more complicated rules and force the player to micromanage and strategize their way to victory. These more complex games can be daunting when approached for the first time, especially in the case of turn-based RPGs, which require you to juggle multiple characters, status effects, and all sorts of number crunching, usually with a complicated story to tie all of this gameplay together. Now, on two previous occasions, Nintendo had experimented with simplifying this formula and using their classic mascot to usher in new gamers to the RPG genre. And believe me, Super Mario RPG and Paper Mario are fantastic turn-based games. But there was still something missing, that kinetic energy that makes every Mario platformer feel so good to play, and something else that was just barely preventing these titles from being true Mario role-playing games. As it turns out, that missing thing was Luigi. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga almost looks more like a tie-in title for a cartoon series than a groundbreaking RPG. The characters were crazier and more expressive than we'd ever seen them before, and Cacletta's scheme to steal Peach's voice just reeked of Saturday morning villainry. However, this vibrant presentation of the Mushroom Kingdom and beyond was also absolutely filled with nostalgia. Most enemies were direct throwbacks to foes from previous Mario games, and the soundtrack was overflowing with remixes of classic tunes. Even the NPCs seemed overjoyed to be meeting the Mario Brothers because of their past adventures. The result is a game that celebrates its own phenomenon at every turn. But a Mario game is more than just a collection of certain characters and musical cues. Every time that Nintendo releases a new console, they encourage their developers to create games that are made with their specific hardware in mind. And at first glance, there doesn't seem to be that much special about the Game Boy Advance. It just has two buttons and two triggers on top, which you would think would require Nintendo to back away from their more adventurous elements that were in the previous Mario RPGs and have to settle for just selecting commands from a list like any other turn-based game, right? And maybe the game would have turned out that way if someone from the dev team hadn't had the following moment of clarity. A button. B button. Mario. Luigi. Hey guys, I think we have a central gameplay mechanic. They took this idea of using only the A and B buttons, and they went absolutely crazy with it. Button presses during combat, which in previous Mario RPGs were merely a nice bonus, were absolutely essential in this game. With Mario always assigned to A and Luigi always assigned to B, you are able to dodge, counterattack, and perform bro moves, all while feeling like your performance had just as much to do with your victory as your stats and items. The bro moves themselves were especially deserving of applause, as they condensed the roller coaster ride of a rhythm game into a single attack, rewarding you with incredible amounts of damage and satisfaction when you pulled them off just right. You didn't just want to use them because of their strategic potential, you wanted to use them because they were fun. Even outside of combat, the game reinforces this simple two-button kinetic theme. Instead of unlocking more and more items to navigate this Zelda-like world, all of your techniques for exploration revolved around which brother was in front and how you could manipulate both Mario and Luigi's placement with the triggers. There's a very strict yet simple set of rules for how the Mario Brothers can interact with the environment, and learning how to manipulate this system and find different uses for your techniques is one of the bigger joys of the game. So what does all this mean? 
Well, it shows that beyond even just the reliance on the two buttons and the triggers, this game was designed to be enjoyed on a portable system. It might not seem like much, but the fact that every puzzle has an easily accessible answer, and that every single combat encounter is made fun because of the minigames within, this made the game enjoyable both in the long run and in short bursts. Many RPGs require tons of time and commitment to get the most out of both their story and game mechanics, but Superstar Saga is always finding some way to entertain you constantly, whether it be through sarcastic humor, engaging minigames, or the pure, joyful energy that exudes from every pixel of this game's presentation. Seriously, who doesn't want to get down and dance to this beat? In the end, Superstar Saga was built entirely around the Game Boy Advance's capabilities and was able to pull off what the previous Mario RPGs just couldn't quite get. A full turn-based role-playing game with a bit of streamlining here and there, but enough engaging content and pure Mario nostalgia to attract new players to the genre. As a showcase for both RPGs and handheld gaming, Superstar Saga is a masterpiece and manages to find that crucial balance where you can forget about hardware specs, batteries, or anything like that. It's just you and the game for however long you're able to play it and having a blast for every minute of it. And for showing that even a game with just two main buttons can be fun and combine both the joys of RPGs and classic Mario platforming, I'd have to say that Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga is really freaking clever. I may have just ranted about how Mario & Luigi was clever for only using two buttons, but you know what you only need one button to do? As in, your left mouse button? Yeah, you could subscribe to me. You could also use that button to, like, you know, like, click on my other videos. Cause, I guess, maybe you'll like those. If you want to keep up with my craziness, why don't you check out my Twitter? Because I post stupid stuff on that.